Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek Fly Fishing with your fly fishing forecast. The date today is Monday, November the 7th. So I wish I had some good news, uh, but not a lot has changed over the last couple of weeks. We're still in really droughty conditions. Um, so I'm gonna try and bring you guys a little more information um, and a little bit less on the forecast side just because there's not a whole lot going on. We could get some rain towards the end of the week. There's some tropical weather um, down, uh, heading towards uh, the Florida coast right now and it may make its way up and, and reach here by like Friday, which would be really good. Any rain we need. Um, it rained a little bit over the weekend, uh, not a lot, but again, every bit helps. So we're still really, really dry. Um, a lot of the leaves have come down, but there's still plenty coming down. There's still more on the trees. So that's still a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, and then obviously a lot of the fish are, are occupied with spawning. So let's focus a little bit today on what we do have going for us, all right? Uh, the state has been out stocking streams for the last month. Uh, they're picking places that have some flow or at least had flow when they put them in. They're picking lakes and things like that. So they're making their rounds. And obviously as we get more water, more and more places will, will get fish put in. So a lot of folks come in with questions about stock fish. Like uh, what do they eat? And are they hungry when they get stocked? And how long before they kind of develop instincts? So here's just a, a few tips and things to kind of keep in mind as you head out to your favorite delayed harvest stream or some put and take water. For those of you that live in Piedmont, this is the time of year where the state will stock lakes and ponds and streams um, in Richmond and Northern Virginia, even down at Virginia Beach. So for those of you that may not trout fish quite as much, uh, except for a couple times a year when the state puts them in your area, here's a few things to keep in mind. So what do stock trout eat? Okay, well, they recognize several things. So even though they may not be wild uh, when they're first put in, they do have some things that uh, they key in on. So for example, stock trout in hatcheries, uh, in, in Virginia at least, um, they eat three things. One is trout pellets, which none of you are gonna be fishing with, okay? Uh, two is they eat a lot of egg. Uh, most people don't know this, but almost all the fish that are stocked in Virginia that are rainbows are females, they're all hens. Um, it's pretty rare for the state to stock males. They're easier to raise. Um, and of course, these hens produce egg. They don't always just produce egg in the spring. Some of these hatchery fish will actually produce egg in the fall too. Um, some of them, their timetables are off and some of them will just produce egg different times of the year. So trout eat egg, okay? And I know for some people, some fly fishermen, purists, feel like it's kind of taboo to fish egg. Just, they're associating it with the wrong thing. Fish eat egg because it's natural, it's, it's readily available, and it's high protein that they don't have to chase. Okay, so it's actually a really, really high percentage meal. And then these hatcheries are just egg kind of constantly flowing through. So the fish are eating egg, they're eating pellets, and then they also eat each other. Okay, this is why hatcheries have to grade fish, all right? And uh, some of you who may have done trout in the classroom, you know that after a certain amount of time, once the fish get to a certain size, they've got to start getting the fish graded out or they'll begin to eat the smaller ones, all right? Um, yeah, trout are pretty aggressive. So streamers almost always work uh, on newly stocked trout. Um, now, they may short strike and they may uh, zig when you zag because they haven't like been pursuing bait since the day they were born, but they absolutely know what it is. They know it's a high percentage uh, or high calorie meal and they wanna chase it. So fishing streamers uh, right off the bat when fish are put into a stream is a good idea and fishing egg patterns is a great idea. Not to mention this time of year with the brown trout spawning and the brook trout spawning, there's, there's all kinds of egg in the system to begin with anyway. So um, those are two things that you really, really wanna have in your fly box if you're fishing this fall in, in our delayed harvest streams um, or our put and take water. Now the delayed harvest streams, the fish are gonna get left in there, which means they're going to have to slowly but surely start eating natural foods. And, uh, and so you, you'll see some of these places that get a little more pressured. Um, I like to use the word conditioned, like once a fish has been caught several times on the same pattern, they'll really start to kind of shy away from, from that pattern. And we call that conditioning. And that's when you, you know, you'll start to see some of these 
kind of easy to catch stockfish start getting tougher and tougher and they start to kind of get discriminating a little bit and that's when you need to start switching over to your pheasant tails your hare's ears some of the nymphs that they're that they are um, eating naturally mayfly nymphs that are in the stream caddis nymphs things like that um, this happens differently for all types of fish okay some fish become very leery and very difficult to catch shortly after being stocked and some get caught many many times before they learn okay so is there's no timetable like how long before they become a little bit wilder each place um, and each fish is is definitely different but for those of you who get out and fish these streams regularly you'll see this progression happening and as they uh, they'll either they'll, they'll either develop instincts and become better feeders and be more leery of things like birds or they won't make it all right so uh, by the time you get to the middle of winter on these delayed harvests uh, those are the hardy fish those are the ones that developed instincts quicker and those are the ones that avoided predators um, when the others didn't so that's kind of like something to just have in your mind and think about as we go through the next couple of months and you're fishing some of these stock stock trout waters um, you know the other thing that happens too a lot of people don't know this is um, the state will take these fish off of feed um, for quite a few days prior to stocking. Now think about this, they're on a regiment where they're fed every single day, just like we eat every single day, and then the state will stop that. And so when the fish get stocked, they're, they're quite hungry. Now, the, the state's not doing this to make them easier to catch, okay? This is because it's for transportation purposes. They don't need all those fish sloshing around in the back of a truck. Um, going to the bathroom and having ammonia spikes and things like that. So it's for the health purpose of the fish to not have them have full stomachs uh, when they're being transported. They don't want them to get car sick. So um, it can make those tanks go septic pretty quickly. So those are a couple of things that you just need to keep in the back of your head when you head out to some of these streams, the state stocking every single day. Um, some fish get put into a stream and immediately they're hungry, immediately they start eating. Others have to acclimate. There's difference in water temperatures, difference in pH. There's, there's uh, you know, currents and flows that they may not be used to. So uh, they don't always just hop into the stream and just start eating like crazy, okay? So things to kind of think about as you head out over the next couple of weeks. Um, the brook trout are still spawning, so we are staying away from them. We'll give you some updates over the next couple of weeks. Some people say, hey, when they stop spawning, we can just go fish for them, right? Well. Maybe, maybe not, and we'll tell you kind of uh, our approach, and then you can kind of take that information and, and figure out uh, how you want to approach the brook trout streams uh, once the spawning is done. Um, as far as water levels, the, the creeks up high are really, really low still. The spring creeks are where you want to spend your time. Um, there, the brown trout are going to be wrapping up spawning here in the next week or two as well. Uh, so they'll, they'll come off their nests very hungry on places like Mossy Creek. Um, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, the large rivers, the muskie fishing, it's very challenging. We're getting follows, um, but the fish are very spooky and leery, and so it's, it's, been, it's been tough as well. So anyway, not a whole lot to update you there on those other things, but just a little food for thought. So um, come by and see us. We've got all kinds of flies. We've got tons of flies. We just got reloaded on tons of tying material. Uh, the Mossy Creek hoodies just came in. They're awesome. So if you want to start doing a little early Christmas shopping, like now is the time to do it. We have everything that you might need here in the store. So don't delay. Get your shopping done now, and then when the rains come, get out there and fish. So, all right, uh, as always, if you have questions um, about where to go, what to use, etc., give us a call, email us, or our favorite, stop by and see us. I'll see y'all next week.